Welcome to Robitech, where we are going to take you through everything having to do with like the gaming PC and tech world. And today we're doing a special episode. In fact, this is a preview of a device that is not yet out yet. We are talking about the Fire Cuda gaming SSD. I was over in Las Vegas for CES and I was hanging out with the guys at Seagate and they were talking about this device and I was extremely excited to get my hands on it. Now, what we have right here is the 500 gig model. There's actually multiple models. There's a 500 gig, a one terabyte and a two terabyte model of this. Um, and with prices respectively in the 189.99, the 259.99 and then finally at 499.99 um, for these. Um, now, the thing about this drive and what we think is so cool and what we're gonna kind of talk about today is like you're like, I was, I've done recently a video and you can check it out right here about speeding up your hard drive for the Xbox One X or same thing for the PlayStation 4. And Seagate actually makes a drive that works for that. In fact, your, your times can be reduced for up to 50% when you're talking about loading and saving. Well, in this case, this is actually for PC. And when I first talked about it and I was, I was having the conversation with Seagate, I was like, man, like, it's hard when you think about it. It's like, it's actually easier to do this on the Xbox because of how the Xbox works. When you have an Xbox and you just plug in an external drive, you're like, oh, well, there it goes. It like, it just works. Like it's easy to read. It just reads the things off of it. And then little did I know that actually in some cases, specifically with things like Blizzard and with Steam, that can be just as easy with a device like this. So a couple things we're gonna walk through today. A, we're gonna talk about how fast it is. We're gonna show you the crystal benchmarks that we run against this. We're gonna show that up here in a minute. Um, we're also gonna show you how to basically get the best out of this if you're gonna use this for gaming and uh, how to basically set that up. And at the same time, we're just gonna kind of tell you like what to expect in terms of speeds. Now, to tell you about how to get the maximum speed. Now, the thing is for this particular drive, you can get up to 2000 megabits per second. And that is using super speed USB 20, GP, uh, 20 gigabytes per second host. Now you're saying, Roby, how do I get a super speed USB 20 gigabits per second host? Well, there's a couple ways to do it. Number one, if you have a motherboard and there are specific motherboards that do support this natively that has USB Gen, uh, USB 3.2 Gen 2 by 2. Now you're like, what the heck is that? Because most people say, hey, I have USB 3.2 Gen 2, just Gen 2, and that is actually only 10 gigabits per second. 3.2 Gen 2 by 2 is actually 20 gigabits per second, and that is not as normal like when I first tested this uh, on the device I have here. Now, what I have right here is I have a Dan A4. It's running a Ryzen 7 3800X in it, and this supports USB 3.2 Gen 2 by 2. Now, if we look over here at the specs, I'm actually running Crystal Disk Mark right now, and you can see right here, I'm getting 981 megs per second, uh, megs per second with a write speed of 944.85 uh, megs per second. Down here below, you don't have to worry about this. This is just your random, but the one that I care about is obviously the top one, and it's run five times, so you can see that this is the average. The reason you're not, you're seeing here 981 versus 2000, which is like what they're talking about that this is capable of, is that this motherboard has USB 3.2 Gen 2 not USB 3.2 Gen 2 by 2, which means I'm getting half of the speed. So when you look at Crystal Disk Mark, what I'm basically showing here is that this is actually completely capable of doubling that speed and I get close to two gigs per, uh, two gigs per second, essentially, which when you think about it, it's absolutely insane when you're talking about an external drive. Because right now, if I doubled this, I'd be getting just under 2,000 uh, gigabits, uh, 2,000 megabits per second, which is nuts for an external thing. Now, you might be asking, what is actually inside of this? Well, this is actually a Fire Cuda SSD, the same Fire Cuda SSD. Now, this one right here is a, this is a PCIe Gen 4. Obviously, the one that's in here is a Gen 3, not a Gen 4, but this is a PCIe Gen 3 by 4 M.2 drive. And like I said, they have them in the 500 gig, the one terabyte and two terabyte modes. Okay, so when we talk about use cases, there's a couple things we can talk about. Number one, the primary use case for this is obviously portability. And really, when you're talking about portability, this is very, very fast transfer rates when you're talking about 2000 or even 1000 megabits per second if you only have USB 3.2 Gen 2. This is maximizing your quality. 
One of the things that I can think of that is absolutely awesome is in the case of basically editing, where you might be at work, you're using Adobe Premiere, you have this set as your scratch drive, you're basically editing your files, you're getting that amazing file transfer rate, you can basically then take your thing, go home, plug it into your system, and get the same thing, specifically for like 4K editing, this would be incredible. And then of course, obviously transferring big files at 1,000 or 2,000 megabits per second is, is absolutely insane. Now the other one that is also insanely cool is if you have games. And you might think like, even though we talked about the Xbox a little bit earlier, actually there are things that are on the PC that can make it just as easy as if you were using it um, like an Xbox. And Steam and Blizzard have this built in. And the way you basically set this up is you open up Steam. If you go to your Steam library, you go to settings and you go to downloads, you see this thing right here where it says Steam library folders. Here you can see I've actually got the E drive in my Steam library is set up. So Let's say for instance, I was like saying, hey, I'm gonna go over to Brian's house and we're gonna play some Mad Destiny 2. And I've got a system over there and I wanna play with him. All I gotta do is install, set my Steam library to basically have this and like I got Destiny 2 installed. I unplug it, walk over to his house, plug it in, go to your Steam, go to add that Steam library and boom. Now, if you look here inside of my, inside of my uh, library, I, I, and I'm downloading it right now, but it'd be basically ready to go, I'm ready to play and off I can go and play the game, which is incredibly cool. And the other thing too is that because this is on a 2000 basically megabit, 2000 megabit drive, my load times, all of those things are incredibly quick. All of the same benefits that I get from having it on an SSD, on a, on a normal machine, I now get from a portable standpoint, which is crazy. Now the other one too is you can also do the same thing with Blizzard. So if I'm gonna go over and I'm gonna do a mad World of Warcraft, all night World of Warcraft thing, so all I have to do is open up Battle.net, go to Blizzard up here in the thing, go to settings, and then you can see the same thing right here. You see your, your basically your game and install update. You can change your directory, and then you can just select the Seagate, and then if you'd select the folder, if it was basically downloaded, boom, all of my games would be available, and then I can play any one of my games. And again, same thing. You get all those awesome benefits of having running everything from an SSD, which means incredibly fast load times in um, Call of Duty, incredibly last, uh, fast load times in Hearthstone, well, not necessarily Hearthstone, but in uh, Diablo 3 and StarCraft 2, especially if you're playing uh, single player. Um, so incredibly, incredibly cool. Aesthetically, this thing is actually very, very pretty. It's made with a very nice customizable, like it feels very nice. It's got a very quality kind of look and feel to it. Um, but the best thing about it is actually the RGB light that you're actually seeing here. And this thing is actually completely customizable. In fact, this thing comes with an app called Toolkit that lets me change my LED settings. So here we have it up right here and you can see it's set to breathe. And I can change my colors right within the app to get um, all these different colors. And right now it's set to breathing. I can do things like change the timing so it takes a really long time. Like this is a minute and 42 seconds before it breathes all the way down to, let's just make it flash, baby. Make it flash. Um, the other thing too is you also have a spectrum mode. And what spectrum does is it allows it to actually just does through the spectrum. It's like your RGB puke version. You can go all the way down to, let's make it go like crazy. It's like a Christmas party right there. All the way down to, it's gonna take a minute and 42 seconds to kind of flash through there. But I like kind of like the middle range there where it takes about, you know, 15, 20 seconds to go, go through all the colors. And then finally, you can always choose like a solid color as well. Um, so you could just be like, oh, I want it to be yellow. I want it to be green. I want it to be orange, which is very secret. Gate we got to make sure we get the quality shot Seagate. There we go. Uh, and then finally, the last thing is, is you can actually set up custom lighting. So here you can do things like, I want it to spec, I want it to go through these three colors. And then I want it to do it at a pretty good pace, right? So here we go. It's like, it's going to go between orange, uh, yellow, and then it's going to basically turn off if we wanted to. I think that's what the black is um, as well. Or maybe it just switches between them, but you can change all of the different colors. And let's say, let's add blue there. So then it'll go to orange, blue, orange, orangey glad, or how does the transition work? Let's see. Oh, there it goes. There we go. And there you see, like now I can set it to all sorts of colors. So we can basically, hey, let's let's do this. Let's take, get rid of that. And then we'll make it red and white. And there we go, Roby Tech colors. Ba -bam, ba -bam, ba -bam. So yeah, there's all sorts of cool stuff that you can do with this, which is actually pretty neat. And I, I'm really impressed with the amount of customization you actually have that you can do with this device. Well, that's it for Roby Tech today. Let us know what you thought about today's episode in the comments below. Number one, what are your thoughts on this device? Is this something you would actually use? Also, did you think that this Dan A4 case right here looks super hot? Well, you should check out that video right here. 
um, and let us know what you think about that. Um, what do you think about, would you use it for games? Would you use it for editing? What would you do? Now, while you're down there, be sure to slap that subscribe button, whip that like button, and ring that notification bell so you know each and every time we post a new video. Also, head on over to Mixer.com slash Robitech and give us a follow over there for our live show every Wednesday from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. Pacific time. Also, make sure you follow us over on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, all at Robitech. Ha, we make it easy. And for that Facebook one, it's Facebook.com slash Robitech. You know your parents are following me. You should come follow me too. Anyway, guys, we're going to go play some more with this awesome little hard drive. Maybe see if we can get it up to that 2,000 megabits per second. But you guys should go play some games or play with some tech. We'll see you guys later.